number three is here. Hellraisers versus SFT Esports. This is the Skin Coin WCA tournament. Coming at you. Looking forward to seeing what happens now in game number three. I'm Breaky CPK, joined by Xerox once again. Type exclamation point skin coin in chat. You can check out for giveaway information that we're currently running, as well as you go to skincoin.org. You can see the latest and great no. Uh the latest uh <laughs> cryptocurrency on the esports market. You you got I you know I, I threw I, you I, off. I got this plan and just ready to say it every time and then all of a sudden that happens. Type uh, giveaway, type skin coin, check out our stuff. There you go. Skin coin WCA. All right. right. We yeah, got no, Odin, I did it. That's my that's my one pitch. <laughs> yeah, we've got the uh, same opening out of Hellraisers, and we get to see the Chaos Knight again. So kind of both teams going to what what worked Ten for them in their in their victories, even the Necro Enigma for Hellraisers, and I mean I want to say they had Night Stalker remain. too for SFT as well as the Chaos Knight. Um, yeah, because Pablo Hellraiser. played a great Night Stalker that first game. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna work out nearly as well. Oh, that's a different pick, too. The support Warlock happening here. 1 in 15. <laughs> He's, it's been a while since we've seen one, though. But Ten does not have remaining. the best history with you casting it. That's right. Five seconds well, remaining. they're going to try to run with it here. And they were very confident with that pick. I mean, that happened pretty quickly for them here. In response to the Jakiro, it's obviously an Enigma stopper as well. So... Perhaps that's a little bit of the logic, at least. Yeah, but how many times in that last game would stopping a black hole have really mattered? Yeah. Like, that was absolutely a game where Enigma was used for pressure and the threat of a hole more than actually the hole itself. It was perfectly executed there. SFT with the Pugna, though. This is going to provide the early game pressure that I thought might be lacking with the Chaos Knight pick. Pugna. Another very quick pick by SFT Esports in that fourth spot there. So I get the pug right. now. If SFT gets last pick Batrider here, I actually think they are Ten way ahead in this draft. Remaining. You just do the thing we've Five seen before. You remaining. have Bat follow Necro around and make his laning phase miserable. That should Dire buy your Chaos Knight pick. enough time to get some farm. Then you have the lasso as a tool to help Chaos Knight burst someone like we saw last game <clears> or two games ago. I really think it would round them out super nicely. I'm not crazy, right? It's not banned. Yeah. No, it's not banned. And, I mean, they haven't even used their reserve time yet, Ten by the way. Remaining. So, they, uh, I'm sure that's on their list of heroes they're thinking about Five at the very least. But remaining. I, I don't see why not. As you're pointing out, it seems like just all around a, pr a pretty good option. But going to start dipping into that reserve time now. Obviously, they do have time to think about it. Might as well take that time. But uh, if they don't go Batrider, another offlander that maybe comes to mind. Uh, there's something like a Magnus is on the board. I make the most sense for them. I mean, the RP set up into a Warlock would be nice. Even Pugna could benefit from that. The Empower buff on Chaos Knight. So. Empower buff on CK is okay. It's just not great because most of the damage is coming from Phantasm Illusions. Yeah. <clears throat> What else is there? Clockwork Offlane is Shadow banned. Shaman. Offlane Shadow Shaman, huh? I don't know if that'll be a thing. Offlane Pugna could still be a thing, too. Maybe with, like, a support yeah. Warlock up there or, or Night Stalker supporting him up there, and then instead you have just a different mid-hero now. If you wanted. Like Batrider. Like Batrider. <laughs> yeah, it goes back to that still just making sense then. Earth Shaker. All right, there's that Earth Shaker. It's been missing for a while. Hello, darkness, my old friend. It's I time we see Earthshaker again. So SFT has a whole bunch of things they need to make this game work. You need your Chaos Knight Five to get to at remaining. least one item, if not two. You need your Warlock to get six in a decently timely manner. You need Pugna to not get destroyed so much that he can't <laughs> nether blast towers. You need to get a blink on Earthshaker. Hellraisers just kind of need to exist and get some levels. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like, hmm. So what do they need now with their final pick here? Again, Necro is one of those, could end up mid, could end up safe lane. 
they're very stratified right now. Like everything they want to do transitions really well throughout the game. If they pick a late game core, or they could go something early game and utilize the Eidolons and Jakiro uh, Liquid Flyer to shove Town Towers. So they have a lot of options here. I think Dragon Knight's a very safe pick that they could look to go. Um, something that would just be a nice stable pick for them. Apply some building pressure as well, but still scale into the late game. Mm -hmm. They could look to go mid Necro and run. Juggernaut would be okay here. <clears throat> the Sven did get banned in the second phase, so that's not an option. We saw, what was it, the Life Stealer? I want to say the first game. There's much more catch here. They can't really get away with picking another AM. I think he's going to be under a little too much pressure, and the amount of silences stuns much, much better this time on the side of SFT. Mm hmm. Yeah, no. This time around, definitely not nearly as strong of a pick. So, gonna have to think elsewhere. And Seeker. Now select Seeker. Their final pick. So. so, Hellraisers isn't gonna feel like they're on the same kind of clock they were on game one. They have a lot more scaling percentage based damage in terms of the Midnight Pulse and the Sadistara. Um, they can really take this game quite a bit, quite a bit longer if they really want to. <clears throat> All right, well, game number three to decide who's going to win this series and thus uh, continue forward in the group stages. I mean, right now, if Hellraisers was to win this, actually, I'm looking at the standings currently. Um, they have three points. Team Empire has six points, and then both Vega Squadron and SFT only have – well, they have no points currently. So if Hellraisers win this, I'd put both them and Empire at six points each, and I'm pretty sure that means then uh, – Five seconds remaining. They Vega would still have a shot, but they need to oh. sweep their last two series. You're right. Vega still has two series, so that's a good point. So what that would do, though, it would eliminate SFT esports. It would eliminate, yeah. yeah. SFT contention. needs to win this game for contention. So that's uh, what's on the line here as far as advancing on to the next stage of what would be the playoffs. So we'll see how it looks here. No, is, is there a pause? Feels like it's taking forever. Yeah, maybe yeah. not. All right, well, figure out a little more what's going on. There you go. Um, and then we are set up for a final series again tonight, guys. King Win versus Effect will be starting as soon as this one wraps up here of this game number three. Let's be bounced back in a Group B action. So there's the pause as we go into the game. But we do get to see that Illidan Chaos Knight once again. Happening here. Obviously, you saw his impressive performance in that first game. I'm just mean, waiting for the admin to get upset. <laughs> Why pause? Yeah. Go, go, go. Um, what What's the way to, to counter a, a Chaos Knight if there is one? Like, what, what's the way to play around this, it? Is, what's that? This draft, this draft is so good against it. Because I, of I, AoE or... Yeah, well, it's a lot of percent damage. Like, that's a huge, huge factor in dealing with it. You've got... Uh, Heartstopper R is taking out almost 2% a second. Midnight Pulse takes out 5% a second. All of this is going to contribute just to knocking him down low enough to get him in Reaper Scythe range. And as soon as he's there, then he's he's just gone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's super nice to have a Necro against the Chaos Knight, provided you have the damage to supplement it. And they definitely do this game. And even stuff like Ice Path. Right, the the cast times on Chaos Knight spells are so very long that if he starts to reality rift someone and you just ice path where they're gonna end up, you can actually like interrupt that first auto attack some of the time. Uh, there's just so many different ways to answer it this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's come. Apparently, ST just needs a couple of minutes, <clears throat> and then we'll be ready to advance on here. Game number three. All right, so it sounds like they got the tools to help deal with the Chaos Knight, at least. just a matter of now executing. I think the X factor in this game is entirely going to be on Thompson. If if he can come out of laning phase okay and can get himself in a position where they can be Nether Blasting Towers consistently, uh, they'll be in an okay spot to take a big tempo lead in this game uh, and try to get something done with that, especially if Kaiser goes the Radiance build. I think that that build might be too slow for this game. They may lose all of their outer towers before he gets there. 
I guess Kaiser or 3-3 could definitely go Radiance this game on uh, the Necro or the Bloodseeker, but you, you think either one, it would maybe be a little bit too much of a reach. Yeah, I think if, if Necro tries to go Radiance, he just dies a lot. Okay. All right, the pain train is here from SFTE, all grouped up, pushing out middle. I'm guessing somebody has a smoke. It's like Warlock yeah, does. Warlock. So I'm sure we'll see that coming to play soon here. And see about finding somebody on the other side. So there's a smoke pop, or spirit. Oop, he wards, but obviously won't see them. Gets back before he's exposed. If he just stands on the uphill, that would have been big, but he does not. However, Bloodseeker, okay, they're going to expose him here. And they chase Void. They're pulling with the reality rip. The fissure a little funky. Chaos Knight's just going to try to block. The Nether Blast comes out as well. It hits. Kaiser is just simply trying to run this whole time. Another reality rip coming back up. Won't even need it. Auto attack from Illidan is enough damage. First blood. In favor of SFT. exactly who you wanted on. Get him up, especially if he opts to go for that Midas again. They get it. Oh, not quite blocked. They still get him, though. <laughs> out of range, man. Okay, he rolls out and actually will manage to barely survive there. But they're, of course, going to take the bounty rune on top of that. Didn't they do that the first game? I, I want to say they did with the Viper from Hellraiser's on the other side. The battle begins. Or was that the previous yeah. series? That might have been the first yeah. series. Okay, never mind. Yes. Um, that was the previous series. To pour it out. At last. All right, they end up getting three bounty runes. And Illidan will now make his way to the top lane. So yeah, Reality Rift is a very good tool for getting early kills. Showed there. So Pugna versus Bloodseeker middle. You do have Earth Spirit nearby. But uh, how, how, does, how does this shape This is a up? much better matchup for the Bloodseeker than uh, throwing a Necro here. Like, Necro would have been a pretty washy lane. Like, no one really would have won this. Kaiser should absolutely body this lane. Uh, Pablo in the area. <coughs> but it's going to head more towards the top instead. Again, the ward here. Good information to use for Hellraisers to see if uh, anyone would be coming over. And Night Stalker just going to go all the way to the top lane, but similar to last game, he can't just keep in his distance. He gets pulled in there by the Reality Rift, but not really much coming of that. So I guess just looking to deal some pressure, maybe screw up the lane control. Kaiser actually seeded a lot of pushing power here and let this entire big wave push into him, knowing his Earth Spirit's here. They're going to try to make it go on Topson very shortly. Now that he has level 2, uh, we'll get super fast with that Thirst. Well, Topson's still pretty far pushed up and again, not going just yet. Going to hit level 3 here now, Ethan. After another creep kill, there we go. Now they ping him out. Here we go, barrel roll initiation. Push him backwards to Crepify, stopping some damage. But now the follow-up. There's that Thirst Chase. Is it a little bit too far, though? Yeah. Uh, with the TP, yeah. Don't want to go that deep. And Night Stalker actually even cancels it. Figures they already turned around, and good decision on his part. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a matter of time, as you mentioned. It just simply not enough damage. Good uh, to Crepify quickly there from Thompson. I like kickback was cute. Yeah. Oh, he decrepifies Bloodseeker, preventing last hitting there. Pretty clever idea, use of that that ability. But bottom lane, you do have Necrophos, of course. He's freely farming against the Earthshaker down here. Earthshaker manages to sneak in level three, though. Not on my watch. That stalker is currently just sitting at the middle lane now. Leeching some experience for himself, but yeah, you don't want to hang around too long, though. Want to let Pugna get those levels. And the same thing as last game, though. Again, every time I see this Enigma up here at the top, it seems like he's just got the creep wave at his tower. Mm -hmm. Soaking up experience. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what happens when you just demonic conversion your own creep every time. It's very similar to a Lich. Once you have control over where the creeps attack with these Eidolons, you can use it to deny even harder. You just start <laughs> snap denying your own creeps at half HP, and it, it keeps the wave right at your tower. This is why Enigma can be an offlaner. Yeah. 
<laughs> on kicking back Night Stalker here. But three and a half minutes in. So 30 seconds until that nighttime kicks in. And once again, I'm sure we'll see Pablo look to make plays with that. Where does Pablo hunt this game, you think? Is he going to maybe go top, try to deal with Enigma? That's their best chance of a kill. I think in reality, he may get shackled into mid just to prevent Topson from getting Radiant's destroyed in this lane, though. Is under attack. He's already setting up, though, on the Enigma. He's deep in this enemy jungle. Yeah. All right, gets back to the tower. At nighttime does fall. And you see Pablo starts moving a little bit faster. Without it, finally comes out, but do they commit too much? Boulder smash on both. Jakiro's here as well. Dual breath, liquid fire. Illidan simply trying to run this whole time. That ain't going to work, though. He goes down. Kid manages to fall. Pablo gets the final auto attack, but now he's going to take a death as well. No. As the tower starts assisting onto him. So ultimately, that dive ends up in a two for one bite back. None for you. Favorite Hellraisers. Good TP from Jakiro. What have we here? And Enigma ports back in and continues his farm. Almost has his arcane boots actually finished here as well. So. Yeah, diving a little bit too much. Yeah, that was a little ambitious. I can't say they were probably expecting the Ice Path out of Jakira, though. Most Jakira's not picking this skill up until much later in the game. That is true. Lie, but the spirit is true. That's it here at level 3. Night Stalker, speaking of level 3, just about to hit that himself and maybe make a play on the middle. Bloodseeker right now 38 and 9, Pugna 28 and 5. So Kaiser, as expected, having a pretty damn good time here in the middle lane when it comes to CS top lane. Warlock could be in trouble. Cool breath hits him. Shadow Word only heals so much. And the Ice Path help keeping him in place. J4 credit for the kill there. So Warlock's found doing a little bit of jungling. And Hellraisers, they now have three kills as a result of what's going on at the top lane up here. And they're going to keep three players up here, too, for the time being. It's kind of turned into an aggressive trolley now. <laughs> With uh, Jakiro and Earthshaker. Or Spirit, excuse me. Earthshaker is actually bottom. And how's he doing here? Necrophos level six. Oh, boy, he's dead. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he really, if he didn't fissure right there, he probably is dead. And, oh, he tried to cast it right there to Necrophos. He saw the animation, but just out of range. But understandably, Necrophos having a fantastic time down there. Back to the top lane. Warlock going to try a little bit of return before he dies. He does go down, though, kid. He's the one feeling the damage initially. Pablo running him down another point in one more second. Should be enough, it is. But Pablo now has to back off, maybe get denied here. I mean, he's definitely dead. They did not deny him. And Chaos Knight has to just hug the tower. So double kill for J4 on Jakiro. All of a sudden, he's getting kills. He's doing a ton of work in this lane. Just by being up here, he's putting so much pressure on the CK. It's not hurting his Necro at all to be here. I mean, this is looking really nice for an opening for him uh, from Hellraisers here. So Nikwa just going to run at Necrophos, but again, you got to be pretty careful with that. Dyer's top tower is under Necro, attack. Death Pulse level 3, has the Reaper Scythe ready. He's got a raindrop. He's feeling fine as long as it's just Necro down here. That's true. Yeah, I mean, the support's constantly being up here for Hellraisers. Do you think maybe send Jakiro back to the bottom? Try to make a kill happen? I like winning this lane top more than I like pressuring the gear shaker. If you can slow down the CK, you're stopping Warlock from pulling, so he's not getting a 6 as fast. I think you're just getting way too much by leaving Jakiro up here. Provided they can keep at least breaking even or coming out ahead in these trades. Well, they're trying to go for Illidan now. That would be a huge kill, of course. Black Hole is ready. He got silenced up, though. That's a big silence on Enigma. Prevents the black hole. You know he wanted. He still might go for it. No, it's a little bit too far. The heal comes out from Thompson. Of the life to help keep him alive. I heard the rupture going off, though. And down goes Pugna, actually. Can he? Will use the black hole to hit Night Stalker. Also trying to stay alive long enough. He goes down finally, but sets up a turn on a Pablo, ideally. Bloodseeker, yes, gets that. Goes for SDST. And the port out. Ooh, he does die, yeah. Or right. Venom. <laughs> Not in time. That rotation, both sides sending in reinforcements, wow. but definitely working out better for Hellraisers there. Uh, great use of the black hole. Number of kills coming in. They even bring down tops in there. And this Bloodseeker now, especially after that, he was already winning the CS quite a bit. 
Now he's uh, excelling quite well. And you look at his interested item here. He's he's currently got a blade mill queued up. I love it. Blade yep. mill, if you're this far ahead, just puts them in a lose-lose situation. If they run from Dyer's you, you're a lot faster than them. You run them down. Fallen. If they try to man fight you, they definitely lose because blade mill, pretty good item for that. So it's it's just a way that he can push his lead even further. I, I really love this pickup here. So definitely reacting to how the game's going here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's Kaiser, it sounds like. And Necrophos actually, Hood of Defiance is going to be his first item choice. <laughs> kind of, one of another one of those items. It's very defensive to an extent, but at the same time, it allows him to just freely run more at them. And be scarier even because of that. So you can tell that that's kind of Hellraiser's game plan at this point. Take advantage of those cores, doing well with their farm, and Enigma is opening up more room for him to now recover quite a bit. The Hand of Midas queued up. Already a 1,000 gold saved up as well. So what's what's the key here for SFT Esports? I mean, Pugna, Earthshaker, what do you think? I mean, it, it needed to be Pugna doing all right in lane, and he's just struggling. The rotation slowed him down a lot. He's got good CS. He put some okay pressure into the tower at the very, very early phases of the game. But they need to figure out a way to utilize this. If you're going to run a core Pugna, he has to do something at multiple points in the game. This is a really awkward fight right now. Milan eventually going to be run down, though. So he goes down. What's Jakiro doing? He's, he's also going to be caught. Yeah, you could tell. Hellraiser just kind of went in, and they realized more were coming than expected, so then they try to retreat. End up losing a couple, but Necrophos stays alive. He forts middle. And now instead they're going to push the, the middle lane here. Know that uh, SFT, they kind of have to rotate to it. Invisibility. That's fairly big, though. Topson got a kill streak under there. It's it's getting him basically to his veil. Uh, that is a very important item for them right now and just giving them the burst range to actually kill things. Oh, geez, that's a long TP for Kaiser. He actually ports out as they're going on a 3-3, but it's not going to be nearly enough. Life drain Try again. from Topson. Speaking of that, he's going to go cool down for another 10 seconds. But, yeah, the Veil coming out now because of that nice bounty kill. But that Blade Mail is almost finished on Bloodseeker already. As yes, we're now 11 minutes into this game. Here's rotation, though, from SFT. Phantasm Army's put out. Jakiro, he feels the pain from it. Blood right. Does connect it a couple to Milana. Beautiful boulder smash done on three heroes. The silence on top of that, but they just don't really have the better follow-up. Necrophos is running over, however, so if SFT hangs around long enough, it's not going to be the case. So they got the kill they, they, were, they wanted. They get out quickly. And again, CK went for the... The Midas here as well. Um, being involved with the Midas attack. is like double dipping Radiant on that benefit. They, they got a profitable trade there and they got the Midas use ticking her up. So that's very, very good for casting. I mean, that's going to expedite his way to another item, mitigate Dyer's that uh, little power trough attack. you have from going a Midas. Uh, that's actually just huge in making SFT feel like they're going to be okay in the mid game. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting way to, way to use the item, definitely. It's, uh, of course, the attack speed increase. Definitely beneficial with those uh, Chaos Strike procs, if anything, only level one, but still. You get plenty out of it, and even without any items, he still potentially does plenty of damage. And as you mentioned, the double dipping effect, he uses Hand of Minus again, so he has another 600 gold saved up now. They find Necrophos in the jungle, Night Stalker does. A little too deep, though, especially now with the Hood of Defiance finished on him. And he also got a black hole ready from Enigma. Okay, running in, here we go. The Boulder Smash connects. Chaos Knight, Malphite's on top of that. Midnight's bolt put down. The Chaos Bolt on a Necrophos. Not going to save him in the long run, though. The Fissure causing a little bit of an issue as far as Chase goes. Pablo, though, he takes the rupture. He runs around a little bit and going to have to accept death at that point. Killing spree for Kaiser now. That's going to seed the tower over as well. Topson canceled his TP, so he can't even come into this. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, he's kind of pushing the mid-tier one at least, so he's getting something because of it. But, yeah, bottom tier tier one is definitely in trouble. But now Top's in. Uh-oh. They're going to roll on to him. Pablo, he already came in, but now he's also in some trouble. Pugna got his ward down. The Reaper Scythe was a little early. Doesn't matter, though. Kaiser does finish him off the blade mill. 
I, I assume is helping right there quite a bit. Maybe even killed him, actually. 3-3, three, three, though. 3-3's three, three's gonna die. He did not get the regen because he didn't actually get that kill. And they end up catching him with the Fissure block, and now they're also gonna catch Bloodseeker. Blade Mail's coming back up in a second. They're chasing deep. Earthshaker's dead, and now Chaos Knight, he's gonna regret this decision. Out comes a Chaotic Offering, though, but again, the Blade Mail popped, and Bloodseeker's still running in. Gonna go after Chaos Knight here. The Shrine just comes back up in their face. Warlock may get picked off here. Blood Rite's put down. He puts the rupture on somebody. Looks like that's on Night Stalker right there. And the Ice Bat, the Black Hole. No, that got canceled immediately. Oh, he went for it. I think he canceled it himself, actually. That's one of those awkward spots. Pablo, Pablo did end up dying still. I think he might have DC'd. Is Milan fine? Top, top. Yeah, the Blast? No, he's not. No. He was he died at the midnight pulse, it looks like. Yeah, he was in position just to die to ancients. He like set that up and he walked kinda of back into the midnight pulse and then he just sat there for about two seconds. Like that was <laughs> bizarre. Tower has been denied. So yeah, a little bit of uh over aggression there on both sides. Hellraisers with a beautiful turn on their own ancients and then overcommitting slightly and that shrine was just perfect timing for SFT. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that shrine could not have been any better. Coin Allows an opening me. for them to have decent time in that fight. And so Hellraisers look like they had a lot of momentum working off of right there, but slowly returned the favor to SFTE. And now Hellraisers has to be careful. Bloodseeker, by the way, he does have the Radiance queued up, so he still plans to get that item here. What about how the pace of the game's going? Do you think it actually could be fine now, or is it too risky still, you think? I just, I don't know. I think it's a little too slow. But at the same time, Illidan went the Midas as well, so that's slowing them down. I don't know. I just, I, I just think what happens once he gets it? He's still possible to just die. You taste your own like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> under attack. It's, it's uncertainty at its finest thing. It's like, what does he get instead? He could go more of like the Yules and, and just more utility there, but... Echo Saber VVV. They, they, they need him to be a right clicker in this game, and Blood Rite's put down trying to zone them out, if anything, but Chaos Knight's actually dropping. He might have the Shadow Word on him. No, that's an offensive earn on him, and actually Bloodseeker just runs him down. Double kill coming out. Kaiser, he is looking really good this fight. Tops into Crepify will help him a little bit, but only so long. Triple kill. For the blood seekers, how to land Pablo? He makes it back at least, but that fight all of a sudden just kind of started happening and <laughs> went well in favor of Hellraisers again, though. J4 did so Dying much in that fight. Stayed alive about a f 30 seconds longer than he should have. Got off a whole second set of spells. Took Pablo's Dying attention that entire fight. Super well done there on the Jakiro. So now after that, I think it does open up the window a little now bit. Now it looks more better. Yeah. 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 Now you have a lot more room here, kid, by the way. Oh, boy. He needs to purchase that blink if he's going to die here. Yeah. Gets a bot. What is death? He buys it, but they do catch him. So he will have blink, though, when he comes back up in about 40 seconds. Bottom tower is under attack. So that black hole presence even scarier. But yeah, Bloodseeker, he almost has a Sacred Relic now finished. Now at this rate, he's going to have it in a pretty good timing here. So ultimately, it seems like it could definitely pay off for Hellraisers. Yeah, the blink needs to come up on Nikwa. Like, this is taking too long. Oh, uh, Nikwa on the Earthshaker, yeah. Mm -hmm. 1,900 gold saved up, so let's try. Maybe if you're Chaos Knight, let him take a couple of these Ancients. I don't know. For now, he's looking where to farm. Yeah. Going top. That's because they're diving. And probably best to cancel that, yeah. Thank you. That stalker goes down, and now the tier two top also going to be pushed in. And I don't think SFT is too comfortable to defend it here. Yeah, it didn't even take Reapers. So Reapers and Hole both still up. The tier two tower kill, the middle tier two, the only one left. We're only 18 minutes into the games here, Rock. This doesn't necessarily scream a team that's, you know, let's siege base or siege towers really aggressively early on. I mean, it, it kind of does, I guess. Jakiro and, and Enigma are great for that, and a lot of group up potential, but 
I, I don't know that's if I would expect so five tower kills in 18 minutes. I mean, siege is the proper word. They plunk at them with Eidolons and with liquid fire, and they eventually fall down. They're not going to be just destroying towers unless they get time to sit on them. And uh, the building hitters don't look great, but it's just a lot of little tick damage coming in over time. This is a very aggressive smoke up from oh, SFP. Man. And yeah, they're going to be spotted first. Ice Path doesn't hit anyone yet, at least. Another ward is put down to the back lines. Enigma, he's running away. Meanwhile, Rupture on a chaos, and he splits up with a Phantasm. The one taking off, of course, the Black Hole. It's not healing Illidan, but he's in a horrible spot. He's going to zone down, if anything. Finally, they saw the Black Hole, but Illidan falls. As well as Warlock on the back lines, he did not get his Chaotic Offering off. The Reaper Scythe does not finish off Pablo because of the Shrine. I don't know if he's getting away, though. Still, he's going to try to get himself denied. It ain't going to work. Kaiser gets the double tap. And three for one fight for Hellraiser's there. So, yeah, they smoked up, tried to make a play, and they just simply got found first, especially with that high ground advantage that Hellraiser's had. That was that was very nicely done there from Enigma. Like he got gone on. I like Pugna with the instant life drain to cancel the blink, but the follow up was just a little too slow. They couldn't get him down before the black hole. As soon as that hole came out, all hell just broke loose. God, Kaiser has a radiance now. Pre twenty minute radiance. If if we said at the beginning of the game he get it pre twenty minutes, I, I'm sure you'd say yes every time, <laughs> especially with the blade mail. On yeah, top with of that. something else for sure. So because of the pace of the game, it's clearly proven to be a great choice. Nine, one, and seven, that helps too. There's a streak for him. Chaos Knight went that Midas first, has the armlet, but Illidan just not looking as scary this game as he was in the first one. Yes. They're struggling to be the aggressors because Niqua didn't have a blink. Like getting a blink Fisher onto someone and then blowing them up with Phantasm. Still perfectly viable in this game, Radiance but they haven't had that luxury attack. yet. Maybe things can change now with the smoke up, uh, with this blink on Niqua. Bloodseeker would be a prime target to catch right here. Radiance and yeah, they're going to see him attack. at least. So here we go, Kaiser. And maybe Blade Mill in time. There's the Echo Slam, Nether Blast, everything coming out. And exactly as expected, the prime target. And now Enigma, he wanted to... Uh, to maybe help a little bit. Unfortunately, he runs into a trap. So there's that blink. Great use coming out now for SFTE. That's exactly Believe what they needed. Radiance bottom some high tower tier analysis. Under Enigma up? can't help that much without Black Hole on. <laughs> All right. What was he going to do there? Radiance I have no idea why he was fortified. there. Radiance bottom tower it's one of those, tower like, I got to kind of be here just because you're dying kind of, kind of feelings, but... And seeing that blink now on Shaker, Hellraiser should Radiance see this as a sign they just need to keep this five. They've got the right tools. The entire pipe is done on Necro, so a ton of magic resist going to be given out to the team there. Ujikiro's got a bunch of levels, max liquid fire. You kind of have all the tools you need just to start running at them. I think they can even post up for high ground, even though it's this early into the game. Like, Reapers kind of breaks that timing, right? You get one Reaper kill on someone, and they're dead for so much longer than they should be. And Pugna's a perfect kill. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's Reaper Scythe kill. 68 seconds. He's out for now. So they, they got a window here of about a minute. Even despite Bloodseeker just dying recently. Don't know if they're going to really be able to push into they're the base, not even though. Making, they're not making a real attempt. I absolutely think they have an opening. Here. Echo Slam is down. They know Echo Slam is down. And there's no Pugna for almost a minute. I think they easily could get massive pressure into the T2, uh, T3 two T top if they would all just rotate right now. Yeah. They do still have Roshan as well as an objective, but neither one being done. It's more just continuing to farm. As Bloodseeker hanging around the area. Invis Rune on Night Stalker. They put a sentry down, too. They, they knew he'd gotten an Invis Rune, but they just didn't know where he is. So not going to find him, Kaiser. Just blood right the creep wave right there. He pushed back. J4 also going to do his part for four staff in a way. You know, he has a four staff. He got Necro, of course, with one. <coughs> Wouldn't be surprised to see Earth Spirit maybe eventually get one. So not surprising, but high value item in this game as usual. Necro fills the full pipe finished as well. He has here now a Lotus Orb coming. So, yeah, they pick up Pugna, which is a great kill to have, but don't really do the most off of it. Seems like probably BKB on Bloodseeker is what they really want. 
It's crazy how something. CK basically caught up to Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker died once CK got a tower kill, and now they're about even. Um, CK went with a very early blink dagger. He, he wants to try to get on Enigma or get on Bloodseeker in the back line and just start the fight by a, a strong initiation. Yeah. Phantasm used. Yeah, gets a second, uh, or an extra illusion even. Off of that, so gonna push out the middle lane a little bit. Very aggressive Phantasm use right there. Yeah, it was just to push out the lane without them being seen so that they could get the smoke off, but they don't really have the vision to find anybody. Like, look at how dark their map is right now. Yeah, it's really only on their side, if anything, but we have a mid fight. They're going in, they catch Jakiro. Boulder Smash does it. Pugna. Night Stalker's running at them. In them a case of may not want to go too far here if you're SFTE and are thinking about Roshan, but pretty risky decision. We'll say it's not worth it. He once again retreats, so they find a pick on Jakiro. And they get back as a team. Not much committed there. Pugna has his own blink. They go with the Aether Lens, and now that uh that Ags is in queue for him. So a nice life drain. Is HR going to try for Roshan now? It's super risky. The one undervalued thing on uh, on Warlock is if you can get vision of anybody in the Roshan pit and throw a Fatal Bonds up, all the damage they do to Rosh gets reflected to them then. And I, I've seen Warlock single-handedly hold a Rosh pit. But I don't know if they're going to make it in time. Now, Kid did just use his blink right there. He destroyed the trees, but down for a couple more seconds. Has it back up now. Yeah, they're going towards the middle. So they're trying to wrap around. They're trying to really catch them off guard. Illidan goes into Kiro. The ice path came out, though, before. Roshan is almost dead. They're in that awkward spot that they commit. Bloodseeker's going to go for it. Necrophos, the life drain, eventually canceled. There we go. Roshan's killed. Aegis is picked up. And now SFTE realizing... They can't win this fight now. They're trying to run. It is daytime as well. Oh, they're so. going. Oh, they are. Wow, yeah, in the back line. So that's a Ghost Shroud use, though. Gets it off, and now Chaos Knight. He's in a hard spot. The Echo Slam, though, takes out a couple, including the Aegis use, as well as the Chaotic Offering. Bloodseeker comes back up. They do take out Earthshaker. Kid, Life Drain, eventually gets a kill on him with the final auto attack. J4 now in the midst of it, too. Guys are running after the Pugna. Nice Ice Path catches him, and Pugna will go down. They've lost Earthshaker. Night Stalker is also going to fall. And STSD on Warlock, he, too, goes down. A triple kill for Bloodseeker. So the Aegis does work. A, a pretty damn big Echo Slam, honestly. Still not enough for SFTE to come out on top of that fight. Yeah, so patient with that Echo Slam, but still just not quite enough. That Aegis tipped the scales. So do we see how Razor's actually put some pressure Between. on the T3 here? And the Reapers didn't even get used in that fight. So still a potential of catching the CK off with that if he tries to do something cheeky. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh yeah, you really gotta Dyer's be careful now. Chaos Knight coming back in. And has an armlet blink. They're going to block them out with a fissure. Pull in, just trying to distract. Double damage on Bloodseeker. The rupture's put up. Illidan has to be careful. That Reaper Scythe is ready as mentioned. They force staff him. There's a Reaper Scythe, and there's the kill. So there's that cheeky play you're talking about. Good execution. We're not done just yet, though. A lot of damage on a 3 3 there. Necrophos stranded, but he does have a new BKB. Dyer's middle tower yeah, he's fine. And Nether Ward doing doing a little bit of work, but Radiant tier three goes down middle. Fifty attack. seconds though, still for Chaos Knight. So, gotta feel like they want to still maybe try to make a play here, go in. Yeah, their black holes coming in. Top Didn't get that used fallen. earlier, so may just see him look to jump on Earthshaker. See if his BKB done as well. Yeah, he does. Bloodseeker. Going for the melee racks, Earth Spirit, he puts a Magnetize up on a Pablo. Life Drain, that's doing a lot. Kid will stun him. Black Hole's Kaiser almost ties in the back of that. He's just running this whole time. So the Black Hole, very defensive. He, he did actually die. Yeah, Bloodseeker goes down to the Warlock Dot, actually. And this is a worst case scenario now if you're Hellraisers. You're losing this fight without the Chaos Knight up. 3-3, three, three, he's trying to live, Pablo. Trying to finish off the job in a Milan, but no, the heal's a little bit too strong right there from Necrophils. Another pipe is also ready to go. He even has a magic wand as well. So 3-3 is still pretty looking good as they 
Will trying to fully retreat now, and yep. Necrofos does get out. Milan, not the same story, though. He goes down. Double kill for Thompson. And now Chaos Knight is back up here. So they get a little bit of damage on the racks. But, yeah, that is not what you wanted for Hellraisers. Sticking Almost around so long. 4K net worth swing there just from those kills. Uh, just awkward, awkward play there from the Enigma. Just going so all in on getting that black hole on Thompson and not even bringing him down from it. The, the follow-up damage wasn't there. It was a little too late. Kaiser already had to back. It was more so that, I mean, it was, it, was just, it was very defensive. Like, he's just, Bloodseeker almost died alone at Topson. And so he felt like he had to go in, it seemed like. But as we saw, the end result didn't even, even matter, actually. Yes, the, uh, the Warlock guy ended up taking him down. But, yeah, Bloodseeker caught off guard by how much damage Pugna could put out there. And now Pugna has a full Aegis. Not Aegis, uh, Ag's finished just about on him. So. Yeah. Life That's range. the issue with this with this SFT lineup. If Fatal Bonds connects onto like three heroes, they have so much AOE damage just to chuck on top of that that uh, the risk of ruin is very very high for Hellraisers. Mm -hmm. Now Fatal Bonds is indeed dispellable, so if we do see the Lotus getting picked up, I know I someone had that queued Necro up. had a queued up. Okay, he yeah. is for changing though. Yeah, coin for me. So Shiva's instead of the Lotus Orb. What have we I mean, Shiva's is great to have, too, obviously, in this game. So can't be too concerned by that. But won't have the Purge now, as you mentioned. Mine. Enigma, BKB finished. Oh, he had a last fight. That's right. So now nine seconds even. Mm -hmm. yeah, the tool's starting to come together here for SFT. They do get the BKB up now in Chaos Knight. So that'll be ready for the next fight. Um, You've got your Ags, as you said, on Pugna, as well as Night Stalker. So they're going to have a huge vision advantage in a night fight and uh, a lot of damage to come out. Topson can solo kill almost anybody on this team if given the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, he showed that last fight. And Bloodseeker alone, how much he could put out. Meanwhile, a nice find by Milan right here. But Night Stalker a little bit too quick, being nighttime after all. So he'll manage to walk away. Uh, Follow-up could not get there in time. Chaos Knight, his own 10-second BKB, ready to go. Yules on Earth Spirit almost finished. Dyer's top shrine is under them to have, and they're going to go for the shrine kill, though. They're not going to give this up, however. And then he jumps in. Reality Rift, they're going for it. Shiva's is picked up, as we see. Pops in the Phantasm. Rupture applied to the real Chaos Knight. That Nether Ward again. You see a lot of damage poking out from it. 3-3 just keeps running, though. They don't want to fight in that shrine area. Illidan, he's now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bloodseeker. The life drain not going to be enough to save him. Kaiser full heals from that, and he's looking for more. Looking for that Warlock specifically. Nikwa did jump in the back lines with an Echo Slam. No kills coming from it, though. The life drain on 3-3. That range of it eventually sets up the kill on him. Pablo stays alive despite that Magnetize on him. But now the lockdown on Thompson as Warlock was picked up by Kaiser, and there's a black hole to make sure to get this kill on Pugna. Unlike last time, they will have the follow-up. And a triple kill again coming out for Bloodseeker. So very awkward kind of fight to the start there especially. But Hellraiser did a good job of not overcommitting into that shrine area especially. Yeah, awkward is good for Hellraiser. Their fights are great if they're drawn out. Your Necro can get the chance to get a Reapers off and get a bunch of regen. Your Bloodseeker just puts out a ton of damage with that Radiance and Blood Rites. They want scattered, awkward fights. Well, now they have a situation where there's no buybacks and 10 seconds for Chaos Knight. Will not have Phantasm, though. Warlock will have his Chaotic Offering. Rupture activated on Nikwa. real early zoning Rupture. Yeah. Get the melee racks and run now. Nice ice path. We'll slow down Chaos Knight as he TPs in. Pablo. Oof. I'm going to be careful not to get turned himself. Urn's put on, but no, it didn't take in time. He blinked in, but now Illidan, did he blink too far? He pops his BKB, says, screw it, we got to fight. Chaotic Offering comes out. Kaiser going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chaos Knight. Don't know about that battle, though. Milan, meanwhile, in the midst of it, he's going to end up dying most likely. Uh, people slowing down a couple. Jakiro gets picked off. Kid goes back up at the start of the Reaper. Side kill. Yes, it's successful. A little bit of overextension from Illidan. And now he's dead for another 95 seconds, man. Seen that happen a couple of times here. A little bit too far. And resetting. Kaiser's going to heal up, but you got to figure he's going to heal up and once again going to maybe look to try to go for another sort of push here. 
Yeah, they more than likely can just grab the shrines now. Roshan's going to be spawning here relatively shortly. So, I would say just shrines, get Rosh Vision control. Dyer's wait for your next black shrine hole. is under attack. Going to see another Enigma Octarine core coming out. As Sexy Bambo has that in queue. 3-3 three, three has his own BKB coming along. Bloodseeker. <coughs> Uh, is that going to be a full AC? Dyer's Almost finished, yeah. Is under Just needs the Hyperstone here. And yes. they'll have an AC as well. Yeah, they're really just trying to make sure they can't get one shot from the CK. Between the Shivas and the AC. Uh, even still holding on to his Aquila this late in the game. They're just trying to prevent that insta-gib potential. Ah. Night Stalker is indeed mi uh, missing Dyer here. We talked about the vision. I mean, Dire Side's definitely getting some pretty aggressive vision out at that bottom shrine area, even. Whereas Hellraisers, they're pretty dark on the map right now, despite uh, being the 8,000 net worth bottom lead. Shrine Ooh, is under bottom Shrine Ward shows the smoke. Did. Oh, it's all the smoke of the Radiant Side. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so they know that's up. I mean, they're not even remotely in the area, so. Figure the Dyer's lost cause. Let it go. AC finish. Fallen. Shadow Blade picked up on Earthshaker, though. So maybe he can go for a quick kill on somebody. Yeah, I mean, SFT just needs the dream. They just need to get enough people stacked up. They can hit a rock into bonds. And then you just let Earthshaker loose on the team fight. Hero. Keeping the bottom part pushed in. Oh, there's the pull in though. Uh, J4. Good quick glimmer. Yeah, very quick glimmer. And actually, it'll end pretty deep right here. BKB's not going to get much use out of it. 3 3. Four stabs over the ledge. Gets pulled back in. But now Chaos Knight's up on the ledge right here. The life drain will burn down Necropo, so they will not have a Reaper Scythe. Chaos Knight gets off the macro part of the blood right. Almost finishes the job. Kaiser's running, chasing after him, and the rupture back. on him. He should die. Yeah, you mentioned Necrophos bought back, and he's coming back into the fight. Chaos Knight does have a buyback. 60 seconds. He's dead for, though. Dyer's middle Would not have BKB or Phantasm. But you do have to think that they may need it for a defense here. You mentioned 3-3. This could be a dieback. There's the buyback on a Chaos Knight. Getting low as 3-3. The Chaotic Offering pull back in, and yes, that's a tieback indeed. Onto him, but the black hole in the back line, it catches Chaos Knight, and that's a tieback in favor of Hellraiser. So both sides, a little bit of a misplay to an extent. Where's Bloodseeker? He's running, Kaiser. Going on a pug now to Crepify, though. Denies him, and he's dead for 90 seconds. They lose to Kier over 50. And all of a sudden, Enigma is also going to fall. It's going to be a complete wipe, a triple kill for Thompson. What? He's playing this so differently than, like, say, No Tail when we watch uh, OG play Core Pugna, where he's a very protective defensive Pugna. Thompson's just going in. I mean, he's got this Aether lens for the extra cast range. The Ags already makes that ult just nuts. He's pure damage right now. Yeah, these, these players are melting, and with Chaos Knight constantly dying in these fights, it's obviously coming from somewhere, and I would imagine Pugna is the, the big source, at least for that damage happening. So, yeah, that commitment of the buying back on Necrophos coming all the way back in. And Hellraiser's just had an opportunity there to be like, all right, maybe we should just kind of reset instead, not have to use that buyback. But they really wanted to keep going, try to finish the game right there, it almost seemed like. And sure, they kill Chaos Knight again, but they lose Necro again, and then they lose the fight. And now Tier 2 middle, probably well, not going to go down here, but... Yeah, they've got to be careful, though. If they get initiated on, it still looks pretty bad. Like, Topson is is very vulnerable to the Reaper Scythe and everything like that still. Um, as I was talking about in the very beginning, they don't have to use that skill on Chaos Saint. They have enough percentage damage to get through him anyway. At this point, their goal may need to be just focus Topson. Radiant he's doing way scan. too much in these team fights. Yeah, he seems like the critical target for sure. Night Stalker, Lotus Orb. Invisibility. Trying to help with that cause. Throwing that up if necessary. Flesh sustains gold Bloodseeker has a Mjolnir now queued up, so really trying to amp that more of that right click. 
Necrofoles had these last couple of fights too, especially in that last fight. He's unable to get a Reaper Scythe off both times. Died earlier on, bought back, came all the way back in, only to die again. Before that was of use, so. Of course they want to uh, be able to take advantage of that, Roshan. It is up, she's ready. I'm sure both teams very interested in that. It's night time for another minute 20 right here. The Night Stacker also does have the darkness on top of that. So you know that SFT, they're, they're definitely willing to fight at this point. And they know Roshan's up. But again, it's really for both sides. It seems like a, a pretty risky idea without any picks prior. But SFT, they, they feel do like they can drop it so quick. Fast. Yeah. If they actually break the Lincolns, Topson does a ton of damage too. Life Drain just rips through Roche. That's exactly what he's doing. And they're they're making their way over, but it seems like they're gonna get here just a little bit too late. Enigma, black hole's ready, Milan jumps in. Nope, not really. Nobody's picked up the agency yet. Finally, Hilladin does. Took a while right there, it felt like. And actually he jumps in. The Phantasm Army's real. He jumps on the Ghost Shredder target though. Necrophos got that off. So now Illidan pops his BKB. Trying to run some wet 3-3. Has to keep kind of reality rift. Gets pushed the other way. Actually got boulder smashed away from the uh, Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight continues going, but Necrophos, she's just kiting this whole time. Oh, but now the life drain's off him. But yeah, where is that black hole? It's not happening just yet. The life drain of Necrophos should be enough damage for the kill. It indeed what? is. They also got Bloodseeker. Uh, Enigma chose not to. He's just in this really awkward spot. This Dyer's is fantastic here from STST. He didn't chaotic offer him. So Enigma has to catch uh, him or he can't black hole. All right. Like that was what he was waiting for that whole time. He stayed in the trees. He made sure his blink was up. He was ready to black hole, but couldn't find the opportunity because Warlock just never had to use the Chaotic Offering. And why would he in that case? They would clearly win in the fight, so he just saves it for the for the reaction tool. That it is, so very smart decision indeed by STST and as a result, Enigma could not even remotely go in for a save. <laughs> the Necrophos, he wasn't even controlling his own character, it felt like there. He was just being pushed and pulled and every which way. Got stuck in the trees. It seemed like that was actually going to be good for him. But then all of a sudden, the life drain started happening. and Somehow, Bloodseeker died too. I'm guessing he died to Pugna early on in that fight. Well, Nikwa got credit for the kill. Probably the Echo Slam set up there. But you know, I was watching Necrophos that whole time. Another pretty chaotic, spread out fight. That just simply went the way of SFTE. And the net worth, it's practically identical right here, but I think it's safe to say you got to like this, this dire side chances now here yeah, in uh, game three. They still have the Aegis coming out of that fight as well. And once again, it's on the Illidan Chaos Knight. I, I think in a perfect world, they probably give it to Topson and they give it Illidan Cheese. But just <laughs> a little bit too chaotic given yeah. that uh, that rush on engagement thing. They really did not have a chance to kind of sort that out. They pretty much had to pick it up and go. So understandable. Uh, but right, this just feels so bad on Enigma sure. right now. He just can't hold. Nikwa goes in to grabify the terrain. Bloodseeker has to BKB in to simply run. He got the rupture off on Illidan. Illidan, though, still plenty tanky. And he beats down Jakiro, even being healed up anyways by the Pugna. I gotta, I, I gotta agree with you. Thompson's doing a hell of a job on that pug in this game. Both aggressive and defensive uses of that life drain. And that goes blocked out here, but they're not gonna be able to capitalize on that. Radiance Middle Tower. It's so Chaos Knight, yeah, he wasn't afraid to play ballsy either, because remember, he still has the Aegis and that cheese in his inventory, or at the backpack mm -hmm. even. As well, he could swap in, so even if he managed to die, not a big deal. Middle Kaiser, that's a little too far. A little too close for comfort. The drain is happening. They go for the counter play. The Black Hole, again, still just sitting back as Enigma. They do take out Chaos Knight, though. At a certain point, he just has to pull the trigger. It sucks it's going to get interrupted, but you just, you're running out of choices. I doesn't have mana for it now, but at this point, SFTE is going to slowly retreat. And very likely look to kind of regroup, heal on up. I'm sure there's some more bigger items coming out. Nearly 5,000 gold in Chaos Knight, so I would not be surprised oh to see that heart coming along. Like, they need to talk because Milan has so many items on the Surf Spirit. He could get to the back. He knows Warlock Radiant's has to be in cast range of Chaotic Offering if Kid holds. So send Milan on a hunting mission. Between Yule's Boulder Smash and Geomagnetic Grip, he can silence that Warlock out for the entire duration of a black hole. Mm-hmm. 
Like you just need to send Milan on a on a hunt warlock mission and just stop that chaotic offering from coming down so kid can actually get a hole off. Not being able to use this skill is stopping Reaper Sights, stopping Bloodseeker from being able to run over a fight. They have Let's to get a black hole off. I do whatever it takes, Bloodseeker. He has the minus seven second blood right cooldown, everyone's favorite. So every five seconds he can throw out a blood right here. It's great for the counter push. You also got macro pyre, wow. dual breath and Jakiro. So when it comes to actually breaking the base here for SFTE now, in our spots, it's definitely not going to be an easy task. But a game that has potential to draw out here. No, but Pugna took the aggressive talent, the 200 nether blast damage over the extra drain life heal. With the cast range, he took it 20. He's going to be able to slam a building down so fast. That's true. Yeah, no, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. That's a very good sieging ability. And you throw that in, he doesn't care about all that counter push. Yeah, again, this is a huge deviation from like how No-Tail plays it. I, I mean, he's probably the most known core Pugna player um, that's been playing it lately. He almost always goes the heal because they're usually running something like an Alchemist and just trying to keep him alive. But in this game, Topson's carrying so much of the weight of his team right now. Moving as a team as Hellraiser's on the top lane. I wonder if he swaps his Veil out for an E-Blade. Like I think that Pugna, might be yeah. his next. I think that might be his next pickup. <clears throat> Just outright or dagger five. Yeah. Ooh, phantasm. Yep. Got one extra Radiant's illusion. Middle tower is under attack. The heart finished as well as, as expected. He does not have a buyback currently, but getting close to one. It's gonna take five nether blasts. You can actually bring down this tower. Six of thick heart. <laughs> Those illusions, man, alone are just doing plenty to the tower down here. Rupture? Wait. Oh, that yeah, was that's on an illusion. Okay. Let's kill them as quickly as possible. Did, did they actually think that was a real one? I'm not really sure. I don't know if Rupture really did anything there, honestly. <laughs> nope. So it's felt uh, I, I, that it's very possible. They might have thought that that was actually the real one, but... It's, it's whatever. He it's did a position cooldown. it a little different from yeah. the rest of them. He he microed that one individually, so yeah, maybe. Yeah, 30 more seconds, it'll be back up, so not really the biggest deal, but small plays like that that buy more time. So they beat down the tier 3 bottom. Going to wait for another Phantasm coming up another 20 Green seconds stars. here. And they'll be good to go once again. Speaking of 25 talents, what does Chaos Knight get? Does he need Hold a pure spell reduction. immunity? That reduction. With the way they're playing this game, I imagine that's what he's going to take, just so it's more phantasms, more things hitting buildings. Good remains. Now you got Enigma, you got Bloodseeker with the BKBs, but yeah, cooldown reduction with the Phantasm does seem really stupid strong. Did he have an Arcane Rune? I swear, okay. He did. I was going to say, that Phantasm came off cooldown really quickly from his previous use right here. So, has it now. What does Scepter do on Chaos Knight? It's, so Scepter cooldown makes it 110 seconds? It has to do more than that. lets you use it on allies. It's really... Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, that sounds pointless. I mean, you could have, like, Phantasm Phantom Lancers. Well, yeah, no, in some games I could see it kind of being... Nifty, but this it's, game is. I mean, that scepter effect came out at about the same time people are toying with roaming CK. It's almost like the Weaver Ags that if you want to run it as a support, it's a very good Ags effect, but it's just so bad on core CK. <coughs> Night Stalker, Invis, or I guess it's more of a smoke. Checking out, you just what's wandering going on. around with Ags gem. You're pretty safe that your smoke's not going to get broken if you have an Ags. So you just run around, seeing where their vision is. Doesn't want to go D word that one ward. Yeah, I was going to say I sell that one, but at the same time, sometimes good. knowing where their wards are and leaving them up can be useful. You sure. can like smoke four heroes and run CK up to the secret shop or something, and then have four heroes smoked behind them, and you know they're seeing the CK. Very long respawn time here. Over two minutes left even. You could tell SF2 was kind of hoping it would spawn quickly, but not going to be the case. 
So they'll have to figure out what they want to do. I guess just wait around. Awesome. Helmers just may that think is, that's what's going on. That is a max respawn time. Absolute max, yeah. It sure is. At the 12 o'clock. Oh, Milan? 11 o'clock. Whatever. Same thing. Night Stalker. It's going to be a big kill. It's a jump. Well, the, the life drain coming up. Kyotic Offering is finally holo. used now. <gasps> he oh, he has a double. He has a double Chaotic Offering, you know, so wait for that. Wait for the There's black hole. There's a black hole. There's the Chaotic Offering and stuff. You mentioned he does have another one himself, though. The mind games are real. He's going to go back into the back lines. He catches a couple, but it can't Got get him. it be stopped. But it does get him indeed. Pugna, Soul Survivor, manages to TP away. The mind games are real. <laughs> oh. Man, this is so meta. That was great. Just the back and forth. The like, offering into the if Warlock cycle. had just realized all that he had hold the first time were illusions and a chaos golem, it, it goes totally differently. He just holds that offering, doesn't commit it there, and then the second the hold doesn't do anything. Universe, a top tower. And all oh, of man, those buybacks. So close. That was three buybacks, right? No, two buybacks. Or Shaker and Chaos Knight. Both find back there. Roshan's still not up. Mention the max time. 30 more seconds before he is up. So that, that's kind of unfortunate for Hellraiser just because obviously if he resurrected like during that fight or just right after them, they could definitely be doing that now. But Yeah. They should know, though, that they've got a window. Uh, if someone's decent at math on their side, there's no Octarine on Warlock. He doesn't get cooldown reduction talents. Your Enigma has both. So you're going to have about a 60... 60 second window where there's no uh, no rock and you have hole so definitely i'm expecting hellraisers to smoke with this black hole coming up shortly that arc, try to make use of this that arcane ring value man on enigma absolutely huge <clears throat> black holes back up in 10 seconds 30 seconds refresher orbs back up now you're right hellraisers has a pretty big opening here we're making a play Roshan, it's definitely going to fall. Their team, especially without Warlock, they wouldn't dare take this fight. And just staying back. Who do you give the Aegis to here? Bloodseeker? I think you probably have to. And Cheese is just so good on Necro. Because you can just go Shroud and Cheese for the double region. Oh, first spirit caught Pugna. Forces a BKB, goes the other way. Life drain, going to be canceled. Kill that nether ward. So no BKB, 30 seconds, still a chaotic offering. And then even about 15 seconds after that where Enigma has double hole and he doesn't have double rock. Looking like they're not going to hit that little timing window, though. No. So the not question gonna... is, is Aegis enough? Well, yeah, so that whole... Surprise factor is definitely not there anymore. So now Warlock knows he has the two black holes and obviously will show a little more restraint. I'm sure this time around again. By the way, there's still yeah. cheese on Chaos Knight. <laughs> Warlock's positioning is just so crucial, though, in these team fights. If, if he gets clipped by anything, or as I said, if Milan gets to hunt him, um, the, the game's just over. Like, if he can stop that Chaotic Offering from interrupting Black Hole, we saw what can happen in the last team fight. That could happen every single time if Milan gets on top of Warlock. Double damage. Double damage. Mjolnir in the backpack here at Bloodseeker. So has that to swap in once the Aegis is used. But with that double damage, we'll see if they can pick a fight now with it. But SFT, they're just sitting comfortably in their base. Waiting for that bit of force from uh, from Hellraisers here. Kaiser will poke at a little bit. But man, they're, they're really just playing the safe. Illidan is just staying at the top of the stairs at this point. Doesn't want to go too far out. 4,600 life sitting on him. Still level 23, so doesn't have that maxed out just yet. These Chaos Golems are going to do some work in this fight, though. They've got magic immunity now. That they do. It's level 25 before the uh, before the chaos night. That's interesting. 
All right, the support hero. And a Midas XP gain talent. That'll happen. <coughs> All right. Not dying every fight. <laughs> True. Less deaths than the Chaos Knight, too. Nine compared to ten, yeah. Here we go. Jumping quickly. Illidan goes right on Shakiro to Gripify his enemy. Gets forced out for the Black Hole, locking down Chaos Knight solely. And Chaos Knight's melting, actually. Chaos Knight's dead for 110 seconds. In the back lines, they were under the Warlock. He does have a Chaotic Offering. He comes out to stop that BKB. The second one ready to go as well. Reaper Scythe kills the Warlock. He got the Chaotic Offering off, but he dies as he does with the set. Or the death is what spawns it, I should say. Milan. He's going to try to run. He'll be fine. We do see Kill and Bloodseeker bringing up with the Aegis. Can they get a second one on him? Pugna is going to try. Life drain, not going to be enough. Kaiser, just keep running. He's still taking some good damage. Nice to crepify, but no, the bait with the cheese. They do kill Earth Spirit. Enigma comes back over the stub, and now Kaiser, he's looking to turn on a Thompson, and that he will. He's dead for 120 now. Buyback on an Earth Spirit, by the way, for Hellraiser. It's once again, a case that they just want to try to finish this game right here, right now, if they can. And Earthshaker. He is going to be caught up to and dead as well with no buyback. It's just Night Stalker who's simply just running for his life at this point with no buyback either. But the base, it's being destroyed. Okay, they actually killed him. They tried uh, to man up against the golems <laughs> yeah. and he lost. I was like, wait a second, how did that happen? <laughs> well, he buys back, so does Shakiro. That should be it. Hellraiser is going. There's no buybacks on the course. There's that second chaotic offering, but it just doesn't matter for the Warlock here. The Ancient's going to be beat down, and Hellraisers will take game three, and thus they take the series. Jeez. That puts the rest of this bracket out of their hands. Yeah. Vega 4-0s, they, uh, they take it, but other than that, Hellraisers might have punched their ticket. And SFTE, as you pointed out, just uh, going to be coming up short here as far as advancing on. They technically still do have another match against what will be Vega Squadron in group base. That's to happen tomorrow at this point, but a loss here does officially knock them out as far as the points are concerned. But congratulations to Hellraisers. Definitely a victory they deserved. And, and just love seeing the mind games. It's not often we get that matchup, especially of a Enigma versus a Warlock. But <laughs> it's what can happen. And, you know, th so that's what caught me off guard that last, uh, that previous fight was the idea of, I wonder what stopped the second black hole from Enigma. And it was Warlock dying that stopped mm -hmm. it because then that spawned the. Uh, to be fair, his second black hole he blanked. Uh, he hit nobody with the second one. Did he hit the second one? He hit nobody. Oh, I thought it was a first. Yeah, one the second one hit no one. The first okay. one hit everybody, like all of the CK. Okay, there was, it was the just second one. one the the second one entirely blanked. It was like a hundred units short of Topson and caught nobody else. Yeah. All right. Well, we got to get into our third series now. But what a finish there! What a game! Always was again. Taking the victory. Feeling good about that one, I'm sure. But we got our final series. Going to be coming up now. Going to look to jump right into it, I'm sure, ASAP. We got Kingwin versus Effect in a best of three now. Coming at you here for the Skin Coin WCA. I'm Breaking CBK, joined by Xerox. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back.